Hello. This is another special video in which we will review the most important themes and events of chapter 62 and 63 of the second part of Don Quixote de la Mancha. So let's review. The series of different scenes and events in chapter 62 make it among the densest in the entire novel. It centers on Don Antonio's enchanted head, but there are also a couple of seriously meta-literary moments. First, when Don Quixote is paraded through Barcelona with a sign on his back saying, this is Don Quixote of La Mancha. And second, when he enters the printing shop and actually comes across the apocryphal continuation of his own story. Cervantes highlights here the fact that Don Quixote is not a real person. In other words, he is an artificial construct. But why now? As if to relate this idea to politics, at dinner, Sancho reviews his governance and its aftermath. And as if to relate this idea to religion, at the dance, Don Quixote shouts a phrase associated with exorcism. If the magical talking head is in some sense a metaphor for Cervantes' novel, which is also on display via the signs on Don Quixote's back and above the printing shop, then the Inquisition is one of the main targets of its satire. The nefarious institution comes off as anti-science and anti-freedom of expression. Cervantes puts his finger on one reason why Spain could not embrace the modern world with the same vigor of a country like, say, England. The printing shop episode is also a fantastic case of meta-literary mise en Cervantes alludes to himself throughout, contrasting his work with Avianeda's, and even takes two additional shots at the Inquisition. Don Quixote praises Light of the Soul, a kind of Erasmian book that the Inquisition often burned, and Don Quixote notes that Avianeda's spurious continuation should have already been burned for being unrealistic. This is a tour de force. What exactly is realistic? about a character complaining about a book in which he himself appears. Nothing. Cervantes' ultimate point, Avianeda might be entertaining, but he lacks the kind of meta-literary sophistication on display in this very episode. Chapter 64 turns away from meta-literary playfulness and takes first a comical and then a serious look at the Morisco question. Sancho's mistreatment at the hands of the galley slaves is more poetic justice for the sins of Spanish imperialism, and Ana Felix deploys a Byzantine narrative that once again advocates for trans-ethnic love and forgiveness. Hell, even a pair of Turks, almost always murderous dogs in Cervantes' fiction, are spared from being hanged. And to top things off, the symbolically named Antonio Moreno welcomes a Morisco family into his house. This magnanimous gesture does not reflect well on our favorite squire. That's all for our review of chapters 62 and 63 of the second part of Don Quixote. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapters. Thank you.